822 here at Big 550 KTRS. Dr. Jeffrey Lowell joins us just like he does every week. Joins us via Skype from his office at uh, WashU Medical School. Professor of Surgery and Pediatrics at Washington University. Good morning, Dr. Jeffrey Lowell. Good morning, McGraw and Kelly. Let's Good talk, morning. Let's talk about this provocative theory. What is that? And why is that so important to SIDS deaths? So uh, SIDS is uh, Sudden Infant Death Syndrome, affects about 3,500 babies e each year. We don't know what causes it. It's uh, obviously hugely traumatic and haunts parents and uh, family members uh, forever. There's been a, a large uh, push over the last uh, 20 years uh, for the Safe to Sleep program, which has cut the SIDS rate in half. And mainly, uh, the uh, safe to sleep is you uh, put your uh, baby, uh, have them sleep on their back, and you don't have anything that can get in their way, and there's no ruffles on the bed, and uh, that's pillows the, are no good, and stuff like that. That's the ABC, right? <laughs> Alone, on your back, and in a crib. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Um, so, uh, so there's still concerns about, you know, what about the existing 3,500 babies? And so some researchers have theorized that uh, perhaps there's a inner ear problem in babies that uh, causes uh, them not to uh, jostle and uh, and move over when um, normally you would if you're normally if you're snoring and your tongues in the back of your mouth you kind of would roll over or toss and turn um, but if uh, you have a inner ear problem and your uh, and your uh, vestibular system is not working correctly perhaps you may not toss and turn, and that uh, is theorized to uh, perhaps lead to SIDS. So this is very early days. There's lots of research that needs to be done, but I think um, because it is such an unknown, uh, it's w definitely worth exploring some of these um, interesting theories. Yeah, that is really interesting hmm. because it is such a tragedy. <laughs> you put your kid to sleep, and you would come back later, and the kid's not, not, not breathing. Uh, I've had some friends uh, who've gone through that. It's terrible. All right, um, let's talk. Let's take it from the top, doctor. A new measles vaccine is now needle-free? Really interesting. Uh, many have called this uh, a game changer. Um, so the scientists at the Georgia Institute of Technology have developed a patch that has uh, all of the vaccine components for measles vaccine on it. So sort of like a uh, you know, stop smoking patch or other types of patches that are that have been developed. This patch will have the measles vaccine on it and this is if you know successful is going to be a uh, huge advance because you don't need needles you don't need to go to a doctor's office the vaccine doesn't have to be refrigerated there's no wastage a lot of time uh, you know people are concerned about all of the wastage that happens uh, with measles vaccine because it's if you don't use your multi all the doses in your multi vial uh, pack then you have to discard it and there's a large amount of waste so this could eliminate going to the doctor's office. You could perhaps just be mailed the vaccine uh, patch and just uh, put it on or if you're in a global part of the world where there isn't health care, you can you know put thousands and thousands of patches on much faster than uh, lining up for vaccines. So, And wow. there's also interest in using this, uh, this technology for other vaccines, polio vaccines and uh, <clears throat> measles, stuff like that. Well, so that is really interesting. Potentially right. a big game changer. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, Tyson Foods made a big announcement this week. Yep. So Tyson's Food is uh, decided over the next uh, two years to eliminate human antibiotics from its uh, chicken flocks, which is a really great thing because we don't want uh, human antibiotics in our food because that leads to the development of these uh, superbugs. Now, it could be that uh, Tyson was motivated by the fact that their leading customer, McDonald's, has decided to do the same thing, mm -hmm. um, which is all good. I mean, it's good to have right. everybody everybody on the same page. And over the next uh, few years, Tyson's also interested in looking at doing the same for uh, beef and pork. What what is These the, are all good things. What does the human hormone do for the for the chicken for the no it's uh, human antibiotics oh, the, so they're uh, giving antibiotics to these uh, chickens to try and prevent uh, infections and uh, we eat these uh, antibiotics in our food and that leads to the development of uh, these super bugs because they've already been exposed to the antibiotics uh, but, in our system but now the uh, some of the animals might get some of these diseases or colds or flus or whatever well uh, uh, this doesn't I keep them from uh, treating infections in these uh, in these um, birds and 
pigs and cows if they get it. But uh, what they're eliminating doing it is giving it routinely for just putting it in their food. Gotcha. All right. And then uh, lastly, this is kind of a really big deal. Uh, it was considered one of the greatest health things ever by the federal government, putting fluoride in the water. Now they want to take it out? Well, they want to decrease the amount uh, that they're putting in because we have fluoride in lots of other things that were used, like toothpaste and mouthwash and, and lots of other products are already uh, containing fluoride, so uh, we're getting too much fluoride. Um, so in that uh, too much fluoride, fluoride is great because it prevents us from uh, developing cavities and having healthy teeth, but the downside is you can get those little white spots on your teeth, uh, especially if you have too much fluoride when you're a child. So this is more um, regulating how much fluoride we're getting because we're getting it in other parts of our diet and other things that we're eating and consuming. That's Dr. Jeffrey Lowell, who is a world-renowned transplant surgeon, and he's our guy every Wednesday. Professor of Surgery and Pediatrics at Washington University. Doctor, thanks for checking in via Skype. Have a good week. Take care, McGraw. Bye, thanks, Kelly. Thanks, Doctor. 828, Big 550, KTRS. Cat Neville's going to be along. Give us a couple of uh, restaurants. Then Bob McCullough in the 9 o'clock.